Hi Sodbusters. Today is Sunday, March 6th, and I'm going to be doing an inspection on the green hive. And I just recently did an inspection to see how these bees are surviving through winter. I found that the cemetery colony had died out, which was not surprising. They had few resources going into winter, and they just didn't have enough to carry them through. But the split colony that is in here, which is a split from the mother colony, is doing very well. They're thriving. And when I did those inspections, I was mainly looking for two things. I was looking to make sure they had enough honey coming out of winter to get them up until spring. And I also wanted to check on the population of bees. Now on both of those accounts, this split colony was doing really well. So they're doing great. I'm going to clean out the end that has the cemetery swarm. And I'm going to move things around to set the stage for a future split. And I'll explain that as I go along. But uh, just a quick overview. This is an insulated hive. It's a 20 frame Layens hive. And it has three entrances on the front. And as of right now, I'm using two of those entrances. The one entrance for each of the colonies. I have a solid divider board so that the bees cannot pass in between. So from their perspective, they each have their own space. And then I have a follower board, which is up against the frames on each end. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go through. I don't know if I've talked about those things for the Layens Hive much. So for those who are unfamiliar with the Layens Hive and how it's set up, I'll talk about that a little more as well. So let's get into it. Now it's kind of a gloomy day today um, in the mid 50s. And at this temperature, I probably would have thought twice. In fact, I did think twice about inspecting this hive, but I came out and checked on it. The bees are flying today, so they're obviously not in a tight cluster. But while I'm in here, I do want to make more of a thorough inspection. At this point, I'm hoping to see some brood to show that the hive is building up coming into spring. I have seen the bees carrying in pollen, which is often a suggestion that they have brood to feed. So uh, hopefully we'll find that inside. So let's take a look. I'm going to pull out this divider board that I have in here. This completely separates the two sides into two separate hives, so to speak, even though it's one box physically. And so that way the bees that are in each of the colonies don't encounter each other within the hive. They are in their own space. You would not normally do this in a Layens hive, especially if it was less than 20 frames. But in the case of my bees last year, they were just getting established. So a lot of their energy and resources went into building up the frames of comb. Um, you can see since they only wintered on five frames in each end, well, this one didn't winter successfully, but they didn't build out a lot of frames, which when you consider, I started with the one mother colony split to the two colonies that are in the Taj Mahal and also split into this colony that's a lot of dividing of one colony, especially a colony that's just getting established. So I wasn't surprised that they didn't build up too much. So I wasn't too concerned about having two colonies in this hive. This here, however, now that they've got their initial frames built up, I'm hoping for bigger things out of them. Before we get into inspecting this colony, I'm going to clean out this far end where the cemetery swarm was. So there are some bees, I don't know if you happened to catch a couple of bees came flying out of there. And there are some bees in this end. I actually noticed after I found this hive dead out, there were a handful of bees alive in there. And they have been dutifully carrying out dead bees. It's a little sad knowing that their efforts are pretty much futile. But uh, I've seen that happening. Day before yesterday, I saw some bees around the entrance. It really looked like scouts, the way they were kind of checking out the entrance. And it's too early really for swarms around here, but I thought that maybe they were bees from another colony looking for a uh, possible hive to rob out. They might have smelled the honey that was left in here or not, I don't know, but they may have been checking it out for nefarious purposes. And sure enough, yesterday I came out and there was a lot of activity in this hive. And uh, I watched pretty carefully, you know, to see where the bees were coming and going to and Best I could tell, I saw a few bees coming out of this colony over here and flying right over to this one over here. So I'm guessing that this one was robbing out this one. Which normally, 
Um, I would be a little concerned about robbing. In this case, it was an empty colony. I would be redistributing the resources anyway, so they did it on a self-service basis. So I guess I'm okay with that. And yeah, this has been robbed out. There were several bees active on this frame. Let me pull this out and show you. So I opened this up and I saw these bees. But if you look where the bees are, this comb right here is all opened up and chewed out, which when they're robbing, they're not real careful about how they open the cells and remove the honey. They're just going after the honey. So these are robbers that are continuing to look for um, any last bits of honey that they can find here. Set that aside for now. And it's sad as they're robbing on one side, we've got the, uh, the dead out tiny cluster there on the other side. These have no respect. to drop it, but it did the trick. So I'll pull these frames out as I go along. They aren't needed in this hive anymore. And I'm pretty sure, like I said, that these robbers are coming from this colony over here. I could have shook them out right over here. And if they are from this colony, it would have been fine. If they're not from this colony, then when they went under the follower board, they could have had some trouble. If they are from another hive, the bees inside might have seen them as invaders and started a fight there. I didn't want that, but they'll find their way home from here. So we got a bunch of dead bees in here. And this is kind of sad. I want to show when the bees form their winter cluster, they will go inside of the cells and all around. And you can see there, um, hope you can see on the camera, that there are bees filling up those cells completely filling them that helps to conserve their heat um, and that's where they died and at this point there's no live bees there I'm just trying to shake off the loose ones uh, to clean out Okay, so now we're to a frame that still has some honey on it. And I'm gonna set that aside because that's gonna help us with our next steps. I'm gonna set that right here. And this one over here also has a little bit of honey on it, but not as much. little bit of honey on there, but it's barely built out. On this side, they haven't even built out wax on that foundation. So now this end of the hive is emptied out, except for the dead bees. So there's fewer there than uh, what I had seen before when I inspected this. And I think that's because of those bees I mentioned that were carrying out their dead. But uh, still quite a few to clean out, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. As I pick up these bees, I'm gonna be putting them in a jar and not just scattering them out here because the uh, bees, they can be good food for rodents. And I really don't wanna attract rodents here by throwing out a whole bunch of nice protein-filled bees. So I'm gonna pick them up here and dispose of them someplace else. So now I've got those bees cleaned out. That was a pretty quick operation. So now I'll take those and dispose of them someplace else. Now my next step here, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm going to set up to do a split later on this year. It's way too early in the season to do a split right now. So I'm not doing a split. I'm just going to set up to be able to do a split in this Layens hive. Now the Layens hive that I'm using here, this is an insulated hive with three entrances on the front, on the left, right, and center. And 
as of right now with these two colonies, I was using the left and the right entrances. So what I'm going to do is take this colony and move them over, and as I move them, I'll inspect them, and I'm going to put them in and use the center entrance. Okay, so I'm going to move them right to the middle of the hive. And as I do that, that one frame that I set aside here, I'm going to give that frame to them. That'll give them an even six frames, give them a little extra honey here. Win-win, I think. Now we'll get that completely out of the way because we don't need it anymore. So now we'll open up this colony. I want to take a look at them and see how they're doing. And as I mentioned earlier, see if they have brood. I'm going to give them just a little bit of smoke here. So this first frame is empty on the far side. Got some honey on the near side, the side that's toward the in, inner part of the colony. And uh, obviously some bees working on there. Now one nice thing about the lay-in frames is that uh, it's less disturbing to the bees when you inspect the hive. So right now I've opened up this part, so obviously these bees are now open to the air and they're aware of that. But the bees that are still inside of here are generally doing their work and unaware of what's going on out here. And as I move the frames over, I'm taking what was open and closing that back up. So now those bees that were out in the open and a little disturbed are now closed up to go about their work. Okay, so the frames don't look much different than they did a couple weeks ago when I inspected them, and, and I wouldn't expect any difference there. Still got pretty good honey stores on there. Still got pretty good population of bees. As I get in here farther, I'm hoping to find some brood. Not seeing it yet. I am seeing them storing up some pollen in there. But nothing really new there. Okay, so these bees are a little bit defensive today. Can't blame them. And I say you can't blame them because since we don't really have a nectar flow yet, they are protecting what resources they have. Now let's see what we've got. <laughs> okay, this is our middle frame. I had hoped to start seeing some brood here. Not seeing it yet. Not spotting my queen yet. I am seeing that they've got some pollen stored up on. I got some bee bread down in there. And they got good honey and nectar on here. But no brood yet. Oh, there is my queen, and I forgot my marking pin, but I know she's there. There she is, in all of her glory. And she went to hide on the other side. I don't have good light here. You can tell it's a little gloomy today, so... I can't see down in those cells very well to see if there's eggs. There's not any capped brood. I do see bees cleaning out cells. But haven't yet seen brood.
So I'm a little disappointed. We haven't found any brood in here. Hope by early March to start to see brood, but we'll see. We'll keep an eye on them, see how things are going. And as the weather warms up, as we start to get a few flowers to bloom, hopefully we'll see more activity and more production from them. So certainly hope to see brood on the next inspection, but otherwise they're fairly healthy. Now I've got my uh, frames moved to the middle of this hive. I'm just gonna move my follower boards to cover up the ends. And this will give the bees the impression that this is their space and hopefully they won't be building wild comb in these open ends. Now the bees generally will go to the open ends. There is a gap underneath the follower board that they can get through. Have not had any issues with them going into that open end and building additional comb. And because we are not out of cold weather yet, I'm going to go ahead and put the, I'm not going to put that cover on uh, because the cover was made to fill up the open space in the middle was to keep bees from one colony from coming up and going over into the open space and getting into the other colony. Well, that's not a concern because there's only one colony in here now. So I'm still going to put the pillow on top to help keep the heat inside of their hive. Now we'll get them started using that middle entrance. And this colony, as they get accustomed to using that middle entrance, that's going to become their entrance. Once they get accustomed to that, once we get into our nectar flow and we get into a time when the bees are building up good brood and the queens start mating, which one way we can tell when it's a good time is that the hive will start producing drones. Once we get to that point to where we can make a split off of this, then I will divide this colony and make an artificial swarm or what's called a walkaway split. I'll move half the colony over to this end and half the colony over to this end. And then I'll give them some additional frames. Now when I move those, I want to make sure that each colony has some honey stores and also has some brood. And I will probably try to watch and see where the queen goes, but I don't have to confirm that. As long as both ends have young brood, and what I mean is they have eggs um, or very young larvae, um, then the bees can make a new queen. Uh, now another way to do that, if you, you can purchase a queen or if you make your own queens, you can, you know, if you have a queen ready, you can go ahead and add a queen to the hive that doesn't have a queen. But that's not necessary because as long as they have eggs or very young larvae and it has to be less than three days old, then the colony will make their own queen. And so that's the plan. The reason we're moving this to the middle and then we divide them out to each end is that these bees, as I mentioned, will orient themselves to using that middle entrance. When I split these, I will close that entrance and open the entrances on each end, and the bees will have, well, they'll come back to that entrance, it'll be closed, and they'll have to decide. They'll have to go either left or right looking for the entrance. Um, if I did this in a typical fashion, put the bees in, uh, put half the bees in a different box, then that box is going to be somewhere else, and the bees that are accustomed to coming back to the first box, that box is going to keep all of the forager bees because that's where they're used to returning to. In this case, none of the, all of the bees are accustomed to coming back to the middle entrance. None will be acclimated by that time to going to the left or right entrances. So when they do come back, about half of the foragers will go to one colony and about half the foragers will go to the other colony. So neither colony will be left without foragers for a period of time. So we'll see how it works. Not going to be doing step two for several weeks. We'll let them get oriented here. We'll let them start building up their colony. We'll let get we'll get into the nectar flow, and uh, then we'll come back and take step two. I appreciate you watching this. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos, especially the step two in this split process. Also, if you enjoyed this video, you might like this video that Google has picked for you. And you might also like this playlist with my other beekeeping videos. So feel free to check that out. And I appreciate you watching. See you next time.